Hello everybody and welcome to this YouTube video on how do hedge funds use credit default swaps. In the 2008 crisis that impacted the investment banking community in the United States and Europe, global financial crisis of 2008, credit default swaps were identified as the prime villain in that movie, in that plot. So what are they? How do they work? How do hedge funds use them? Let's take a deep dive into all of this right away. Credit default swaps, let's break down the word. The first is credit, which basically means a relationship of a lender and a borrower. Default means you're anticipating the borrower to default. The crisis of default arises when a borrower is not able to pay the interest on the loan or is not able to pay the principal repayment as well. So if either of these two instances occur, after a grace period of about 90 to 120 days, the borrower is categorized as a defaulter. So the default implies means the borrower has not met the payment on the date that it was scheduled to be made. Swaps means an exchange of cash flows. I've already uploaded a couple of videos on swaps, understanding the basics of swaps, what do we, what do we mean by swap trading, what are the implications of OTC derivative swaps, etc. So these three ingredients make up what are called as credit default swaps. Let's understand each one of them now. A credit default swap is therefore an OTC derivative. OTC standing for over-the-counter derivative. It's completely customized to meet the requirements of the two counterparties. As I've already mentioned in the video on swaps, in a credit default swap also there will be two parties which are exchanging only the cash flows at the time of contractual dates. A credit default swap is bought by the bond investor. Why would a bond investor, an investor in a bond is like a lender of the financial system, right? So why would a lender buy a credit default swap? As a protection from the default risk that the investor suffers from. So if all this is making a little too heavy for you, let's take an example straight away. My favorite fund is back again, Hari Hedge Fund which I think is a bond investment fund, okay? Or maybe it's a distress situation fund or something like that. And it has made significant investments in a company called KH Inc. KH Inc, in reciprocation of its investment, issues bonds to Hari Hedge Fund. To sum it up, Hari Hedge Fund has given capital to KH Inc., KH Inc. has issued bonds against this capital and the relationship between the two of them is KH Inc. is the issuer of the bonds, Hari Hedge Fund is the investor in the bonds. This is the underlying transaction. Okay. Moving on, Hari Hedge Fund as an investor, does it face any risk? What do you think? Will you be able to identify the risk that a bond investor faces? Yes, my friends. The biggest risk that any bond investor faces is the default risk. The risk that the invest, investor does not receive the coupon payments on time or does not receive the principal on time. This is a most important driving factor for bond pricing. That is credit worthiness of the borrower. In this case, KH Inc. is the bond issuer, Hari Hedge Fund is the investor and because the fund has invested in bonds, its biggest risk is that the issuer could default on its coupon payments and or its principal repayment. Hari Hedge Fund therefore wants to reduce this default risk. It is an uncertainty as of now. Either Harif Hedge Fund can completely exit the bond position, 
find another buyer for the bonds and completely exit it, in which case it will take a significant amount of loss if the event of default occurs. But the default event hasn't occurred yet. So Hari Hedge Fund wants to stay invested in the bonds and take a protection against default risk. Are we understanding this? So this is a very important aspect of understanding the mentality of a fixed income investor. If they knew for sure that the borrower is going to default, then they wouldn't invest in the first place. But they're always taking a risk by investing in less than top-notch investments because they get better coupons, they get better earnings, and that boosts the fund's performance as well. So let's see what Hari Hedge Fund can do. Hari Hedge Fund buys a credit default swap. And from whom does Hari Hedge Fund buy this credit default swap? It buys it from a serious seller. Who are the typical entities that sell credit default swaps? The typical entities that sell credit default swaps are insurance companies, are other investment banks, are other commercial banks etc. also who are willing to take an exposure on the bond investment of Hari Hedge Fund. So a credit default swap is now protecting Hari Hedge Fund from the event of default. If KH Inc. is unable to pay the coupon payments or the principal on time. The credit default swap is an OTC derivative. It's over-the-counter derivative. It's customized to meet the requirements of both the counterparties to the trade. It is bought by the bond investor to protect the investor from default risk. That it may suffer in if KH Inc. actually defaults. So the credit default swap, therefore, is a very exotic kind of an OTC derivative. So let's see this flow chart again. KH Inc. is the bond issuer. It has issued bonds to Hari Hedge Fund. This is the underlying trade. Hari Hedge Fund is not sure, it's not comfortable with the risk exposure and wants to buy a protection against default of KH Inc. Therefore, it buys a CDS from the CDS seller. So Hari Hedge Fund is an investor as a counterparty to KH Inc. It is a buyer of the CDS from the CDS seller. Okay, so this is the uh, flow chart. So all the dates could be different over here. Okay, the date of issuance of bonds could be three years before and you might decide to start a swap three years after the bond has been in issuance and so on and so forth. The CDS seller over here is guaranteeing payment to Hari Hedge Fund if KH Inc. defaults. Okay, that is a very big if. Now, since Hari Hedge Fund uh, is buying the CDS, in the contract between Hari Hedge Fund and the CDS seller, the underlying issuance is called as the reference obligation and KH Inc which has issued the bonds is called as the reference entity okay so that's the relationship of the reference entity with Hari Hedge Fund now what happens KH Inc has issued bonds to Hari Hedge Fund and since Hari Hedge Fund has bought the CDS, it must always pay premium to the CDS seller. This premium can be annual, it can be quarterly, it can be semi-annual as well. Most of the CDSs that I have researched for this video are annual, CDS, are annual premium payments. So the CDS seller always collects the premium from Hari Hedge Fund every year as long as the CDS is outstanding. If KH Inc. defaults, the CDS seller then calculates the payout to Hari Hedge Fund. Hari Hedge Fund takes a haircut. Why? Because if KH Inc. has defaulted and Hari Hedge Fund has invoked the obligation under the CDS, then 
the CDA seller is obliged to pay the upfront principal to Hari Hedge Fund. But because these are discounted cash flows, there would be a haircut that Hari Hedge Fund takes. Haircut means the loss in the value of the issuance because of prepayment, because of market values, etc. Okay, if KH Inc. defaults, then CDA seller compensates Hari Hedge Fund for the investment. Hari Hedge Fund will never recover. 100% of its initial investment, it will recover about 85 to 90%, but it is still better than getting nothing at all. If KHing does not default, which is a very good thing for Hari Hedge Fund, the CDA seller collects the annual premium. There is no payout that is given by the CDS seller. The annual premium that is paid by the CDS buyer, that is Hari Hedge Fund, to the CDS seller is a sunk cost and will be paid irrespective of whether the payment of the payout happens or not in case KH Inc. defaults. Thank you so much for listening into this video. If you like the content, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like and share with your friends to grow the investment banking community.